Sergio Perez has been the talk this season, as many think his subpar performance will get him fired from Red Bull soon. These talks intensified when Daniel Ricciardo returned to drive an F1 car in Alpha Tauri, the sister team of Red Bull. While many expected Perez to be behind Max every race, somehow something always happens that doesn't allow him to succeed. The media has been posting non-stop stories at who exactly might be Perez's successor, but now the tables have turned with the statement of Horner. Stay until the end to find out. There has been ongoing speculation about Perez's future within Red Bull Racing due to his performance gap compared to his teammate Max Verstappen for a while now. Verstappen's dominant victory streak at the Dutch Grand Prix has only fueled this discussion. Recent comments from Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko have added to the speculation. Marko suggested in interviews that Perez might not be completely guaranteed to retain his seat for the 2024 season, even though he has a valid contract. Daniel Ricciardo's return to Alpha Tauri is widely interpreted as a potential audition for Perez's seat at Red Bull. However, this move seems more geared towards the 2025 season rather than for the upcoming year. Following the Zandvoort race, Horner has officially and clearly confirmed that Perez will continue to hold his seat in 2024 despite the comments made by Marco. Horner emphasized that Perez's position for the next year is settled and well-defined. He highlighted that there's an agreement in place with Perez to be a driver for Red Bull Racing. Horner further stated that the team is satisfied with Perez's performance. He mentioned Perez's strong drive in the race, even though he had an unfortunate penalty due to a pit lane speed limit violation. Horner also pointed out Perez's achievements, including being in second place in the World Championship standings and being the only driver, apart from Verstappen, to have secured Grand Prix victories this year. Horner emphasized that Perez will definitely continue as their driver for the 2024 season, even though Verstappen's remarkable performance might cast a shadow on his achievement. He highlighted that Verstappen's dominance extends not only over his teammates, but also the entire grid. Horner mentioned how Verstappen impressively surged through the field in the early wet laps of the Dutch Grand Prix, even though a pit stop for intermediates caused him to lose his lead to Perez. Horner acknowledged that Verstappen's current phase in his career is exceptionally exceptional. He emphasized that there's likely no other driver on the grid who could achieve what Verstappen has been accomplishing in that car. Being Verstappen's teammate, Horner explained, is a tough position to be in due to the incredibly high standards Verstappen sets. When evaluating Perez's performance, it's crucial to consider his results and times on the track. If Verstappen wasn't in the picture, Perez could have secured around four or five additional race victories. Perez is effectively fulfilling his role. He's currently holding the second position in the World Championship standings. His display during the recent race showcased his capabilities. Although a speeding penalty hindered his outcome, he's still showcasing his potential, and the team hopes that he can achieve more wins before the season concludes. There's confidence in Perez's performance and job fulfillment in this situation. What's curious, though, is Marco's perspective on Liam Lawson's sensible drive today. Given the limited opportunities, Lawson managed his performance well. Depending on how long Daniel Ricciardo stays out, Lawson could potentially participate in two more races as the reserve driver. And he doesn't have commitments in Super Formula until the end of October. However, the question is whether Marco will want him to stay in Formula 1 until the season's end. Lawson has a chance to win the title at Suzuka's doubleheader final race, which might be affected by his F1 involvement. The prospect of Lawson participating in four or even five F1 races before concluding the Super Formula season in Japan could provide valuable insights into his F1 potential for Horner and Marco, but the possibility of having a New Zealander in Formula 1 again is exciting. It's likely that Ricardo is being considered for a short-term role, possibly brought in for his specific expertise without a lengthy developmental commitment. The question arises whether it's sensible to take a risk with an unknown factor like Lawson. It's foreseeable that Yuki Tsunoda might leave Alpha Tauri in the future, possibly sooner than later, due to his performance not being remarkably exceptional and Honda's involvement. 
While Lawson might find a suitable place at Alpha Tauri, it's important not to underestimate Ricardo's experience and how quickly he adapted to the Red Bull racing team. And, as I said, Liam Lawson's performance is commendable, especially given the challenging circumstances he faced. He tackled a new car without any prior practice sessions, which is quite a feat. Also, Lawson did have an opportunity to drive Max Verstappen's car during a rookie practice session last year, and he held his ground, showing competitive pace. It's reasonable to assume that both Marco and Horner are closely monitoring Lawson's progress. They wouldn't want to dismiss his potential, considering the possibility that Ricardo or Sonoda might move to other teams. Horner's choice of words indicates that there's a possibility of considering other options instead of keeping Perez. If that wasn't the case, he would have straightforwardly stated, Perez will be driving for Red Bull Racing next year. Instead, he said, Perez's situation for next year is clear. He's a Red Bull Racing driver. We have an agreement with him. What this means is that Perez is part of the group that includes Verstappen, Ricardo, Sonoda and Lawson. They all have contracts with Red Bull Racing. Horner's statement remains true, even if Perez is benched or moved to Alpha Tauri. None of them are specifically committed to driving a particular car. In fact, they aren't committed to driving any car at all. Horner is well aware of the subtleties within his statement, and he knows that the people he's communicating with can grasp these nuances as well. However, the situation isn't particularly surprising. Any second driver who consistently lags significantly behind their teammate would naturally expect their performance to be scrutinized unless they have a special circumstance like having a family connection to the team, like a certain Lance Stroll. It's also worth mentioning that there's a strong effort to elevate Max's standing even more, despite his already impressive skills. The intention might be to make him appear even more exceptional compared to other drivers. This approach could be driven by a belief that many F1 fans are more interested in the persona of a dominant superstar than in actual racing performance. The focus on Max's superiority might stem from the understanding that some fans prefer such larger-than-life figures. This perspective suggests that figures like Kvyat, Albon, Gasly or Perez wouldn't receive the same level of attention as they might not fit the desired image as effectively. Ricardo, on the other hand, could be seen as more marketable in this context. This strategy of enhancing Max's appeal could be seen as a reaction to fan preferences, possibly influenced by Marco's fan-focused approach. However, the notion that Max's advantage is so significant that he could win a championship even with a midfield car might be met with skepticism by those who follow the sport closely. It's unlikely that anyone with reasonable judgment would accept this claim. Regarding Perez's performance, some suggest that if he were the top or equal driver at Racing Point, he might qualify better. This perspective implies that the team's car is highly competitive and might be adjusted to maintain Max's prominence. The overarching goal could be to have Max break numerous records, which could result in increased commercial success, ultimately benefiting the business side of Formula 1. In the current cost-controlled era of Formula 1, it's still possible for Max to secure drivers' titles, but the team's margins of success need to be narrower. Red Bull Racing can also clinch constructors' titles, but the contribution of their second driver becomes crucial. Despite Mercedes winning the constructors' championship, Perez played a significant role in helping Max secure the 2021 drivers' title. While Perez has accumulated more points, his scrappy and determined driving style doesn't seem to be as prevalent as before. Then there's the possibility that Sonoda might be picked up by another team, like Aston Martin, which could leave Red Bull with Ricardo and Lawson. This speculation is based on two recent discussions. Firstly, there are rumours circulating that Aston Martin, under Stroll Sr's influence, might have decided that Lance Stroll isn't meeting the required performance level. Consequently, they could be considering separate paths for both Lance and the team. There have been mentions of Stroll Sr.'s interest in pursuing other interests like tennis. Secondly, it suggested that nurturing a positive relationship with Honda could be advantageous. This might involve hiring a driver associated with Honda for the next couple of years. This strategic move could strengthen the connection between Honda and the team, leading to better results. This approach might eventually establish the new driver as a lead figure when Honda becomes the team's power unit supplier. So after all this, do you think Perez will drive for Red Bull next season? Let us know in the comments down below.